those leaders who hold to the Western mode are dismissed as neoliberals. Now, I make no apology to anyone <coughs> for following the path of the late right excellent Sir Bradley Adams, the late right excellent Sir Hugh Springer, the late right excellent Errol Warren Barr, and the late right excellent Sir Frank Walcott, and those who have established a history and practice of responsible industrial relations in Barbados. You do not define my culture for me. I know the culture of my country, and I know I will support the culture of my country. I do not worship at the feet of foreign gods. I am laying blame, if you want to call it that, for why we are here on all parties, every party. That is every party that had the opportunity to govern. Especially between the period 2002 and now. <laughs> it is my view that decline in Barbados can be sharply distinguished from after 2002. Now 1991. Up to 2002, there were eight straight years of economic growth. After that, you could see the decline. We dropped our guard in relation to productivity. I also ask you to go and read the research done by Lawrence Nurse and Professor Andrew Downs after 10 years of the social partnerships, 1993 to 2003. You read that, don't take my word and understand what a very prominent labor economist was saying in terms of productivity declines in our country. As I said, if the political skeptics who want to think politically, yes sir, and challenge, yeah, yeah, and challenge our statements, go and do the reading and come back. When you do that, I'll meet you one on one or anywhere else. Okay. And discuss what I'm saying with you. All right, great. 2002, you can see the decline from there. You check out before you write an article because you want to challenge me. I'll challenge you first. Thank you very much. We're on. In the new normal, Barbados and Barbados together will have to fight to redeem our future, our legacy to our children and to those not yet born if we don't act now to reverse the situation that we have been led into over centuries where well, and in this and, and in recent times, 73 to 74, one administration in terms of decline, 81 to 83, another administration, 91 to 93, another administration, 2001, 2002, and now 19, no, no, 2007 to the present, and we don't know where we're going. It's not about blaming individuals. It's not about blaming parties. It's about dealing with the realities of our country. Those are facts that cut across all parties, and it's not only in Barbados, it's in the Caribbean too. So we want people to be with clear heads in terms of how they look at information that is there and available. We need to recognize that we are in a knowledge-based world. That's where it is. We're not going backward. It's going to be a knowledge-based world and a knowledge-based economy. And our human resource development strategy has to be based on that. And, and that is what needs a national discussion, not whether students should pay for part of their tuition. The wider question of a human resource development strategy is really the issue that the social partners have to engage in. Come to the table and discuss what that strategy is going to be from the, from the children who are before they go into school. What are we going to do with them? Right through to postgraduate, whatever we want to do. There has to be a human resource development strategy because it will not only de determine what the future of Barbados is going to be, is going to determine what the future of the trade union is going to be. I believe that trade unions must be involved in contributing to wealth creation. That's a fundamental issue. Why do you think the trade unions 
formed two of the most successful credit unions in Barbados. In fact, the NUPW formed the most successful one. The Barbados Workers Union formed a good one. That's about wealth creation. It's about thrift. It's how to build yourself fully. And no trade union could have kept out of that and said we were only about negotiating and so on. Makes absolutely no sense. And I know we have more work to do in that area. The area of cooperatives, yeah. after we've done so well in the financial cooperative, we have work to do. Yeah. We have to go ahead and do what we have to do. And in terms of our normal instruments, collective bargaining, grievance, silent, and industrial action, well, they will be there. And we use them with discretion in terms of where we have to go. I must tell you that things like uh, collective bargaining and angry bassanic can become fairly old hat after time. It's very much business as usual. Unless you try to enrich them with something else. You just come back every year and say the same thing all over again. So, so we have to be looking to enrich our business. And, and quite frankly, I don't know this much you can enrich with industrial action. <laughs> I don't know you move that to any other level. <laughs> Tell you do. So we, we really have to see what we can do as, as, as institutions of change to benefit the people whom we represent. 